Hey everyone, this is Adam Ellenboss from Nightlight Astrology, and today we are going to take a look at Mars and Uranus coming to conjoin one another, which is taking place over the weekend and into the early part of next week. So we'll take a look at this both today and in the early part of next week, uh, just to be sure that we're covering it from uh, a few different angles. We've already looked at this transit as well from uh, the standpoint of, um, I don't know, three or four different videos that we've done over the past month. So most of you who watch my channel should be well aware of the fact that these two planets coming together forms one of the more challenging transits of 2024. And uh, hopefully being prepared for it helps us to move through it with uh, greater awareness, greater consciousness, and greater appreciation for uh, what this transit can also achieve with respect to our growth and development as spiritual beings. So anyway, that's our goal for today. Before we get into it, don't forget to like and subscribe. It takes two seconds. I noticed that there are an enormous amount of people who watch this channel regularly. We can see in the statistics, but don't subscribe. When you do subscribe, it helps us grow. So take two seconds and press the subscribe button. It really does help us. Transcripts of any of these daily talks can be found on the website, which is nightlightastrology.com. I am very excited to share with you some events that are uh, coming up. So, um, Next week, you can go to the live events page and you'll see I'm giving a talk on Uranus entering Gemini. That is July 18th. We're going to be talking about one of the major transits of 2025, which is the entrance of Uranus into Gemini and how that's going to be affecting each of you. Uh, you can attend this talk and you can attend it live or receive the recording afterward. If you can't make it live, we give that to you as well. So sign up now. Hope to see you there next Thursday night. All right. Well, on that note, let us turn our attention to the real-time clock where we can observe this upcoming conjunction. So uh, here we are. And <clears throat> as of Friday, July 12th, we can see that Mars and Uranus are coming together. Let's move this one day forward to Saturday. You see that um, tomorrow, Mars will be entering the 25th degree. Sunday, it's getting closer. And then Monday, is when we have the exact conjunction. Uh, and I'm just gonna back this up a touch. So you can see that it is about 8.30 in the morning, July 15th, central time. That's my time zone here in Minneapolis. That the two planets will conjoin in the sign of Taurus. What is especially important to note is that at the same time, the fallen moon in Scorpio is moving through an opposition to these two planets. We go forward one more day. Lovely solar return signature for me on July 16th. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, what a year. The moon will be opposite uh, Uranus and Mars in Taurus <clears throat> through Monday and Tuesday, the 15th and 16th, providing uh, quite a, like an, a, a, a pop. It, it adds... Um, a depth and intensity on the emotional level and on the level of circumstances and, and fate and fortune that's unfolding around this event. So it is quite powerful. We'll just say that. Today, what I want to do, and we're going to be visiting this on Monday as well, likely Monday and Tuesday, um, is I want to remind you of five of the most basic things to watch for uh, when Mars and Uranus get together, whether it's an opposition, a conjunction, and so forth. One thing that's nice about conjunctions is that they represent the starting points of new cycles. And so this is the seeding point of a revolutionary cycle of activity in our life, but it may come with a shock and surprise. It may be marked by various kinds of conflicts or uh, outbursts of strong dynamic energy, uh, but it is a seeding point nonetheless that also dates back to the seeding point of the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus not too many degrees earlier that happened on April 20th. So uh, one of the things that we can watch for, and I'm just going to roll through this list nice and easy today. As you guys know, I'm recording this around the fourth holiday, which I'm spending with um, some families away. So these have been a little more on the brief side this week. But uh, so support and security failures. Taurus is a sign that loves peace, ease, and stability. And broadly speaking, is interested in a combination of security, pleasure, wealth, and enjoyment all kind of wrapped into one. So when these uh, two planets get together, 
and a fixed Earth sign ruled by Venus, Mars can become um, an agent of disruption, uh, an action that is somehow necessary or that is boiling over that also um, may represent a temporary uh, a, a temporary um, setback or how do I want to put this? <clears throat> a temporary failure of support or security systems or features of our lives. Now, this could be something that's just kind of inconvenient. Or if you remember back to the monthly overview, Alexandra Blair was talking about the Mars-Uranus conjunction in Taurus a few years ago that resulted in the power grid failure in Texas uh, around cold weather. So when support or security features of our lives fail, it's often because we haven't taken care of them correctly or they need to be changed or updated or there needs to be some kind of revolution in the design of a system or structure so that it can provide ease, safety, comfort, etc. So consider that systems of support or security that are providing some level of peace and ease or even enjoyment in our lives may um, experience disruption or even failure. Now, the trick is, can we meditate or sit with whatever comes up and locate something of the evolutionary message? Like, What is the message for growth here? Why did this happen? We may not fully understand why things happen, but is there some level of the why that we can get to? And or is there some, some way in which this disruption uh, leads to the ability to grow and heal and change in positive ways? If we, can, if we look for that, that usually is, it's a good sign that we're even looking for that. It usually leads to good things. So something I, I try to avoid is getting afraid of a transit like this, even though it'd be easy to. <clears throat> and instead, just keeping my eyes and ears and heart open. All right. Number two is a moment of aggressive breakthrough, rebellion, and creativity. These Mars, Uranus is erratic and aggressive, but also rebellious, defiant, and creative and original. It likes to think outside of the box. It likes to break with the familiar in order to create something very different. So a moment of aggressive breakthrough, rebellion, and creativity could be, um, again, a little erratic, a little disruptive. Uh, there's a uh, maybe a tendency toward conflict or having to break or, or, or kind of sever or cut ties with something or someone. But in doing that, we may experience a greater degree of freedom and creative fulfillment. But watch for that energy being quite aggressive. Number three is a Venusian revolution following on the heels of Jupiter Uranus conjoining in Taurus back in April on April 20th. Mars Uranus reiterates and says, all right, let's press the gas pedal on that picture of Venusian revolution. Whether that's in the body or that's around security, pleasure, the sensual dimension of life, the dimension of life that is meant to be enjoyed and the peaceful, easy feeling to uh, call on the eagles, right? That that everyone's looking for. Everyone's here in a sense, struggling to, stru struggling to find a nice vibe to, to just roll along with. Sometimes in our lives, we have to make radical changes so that the quality of love, the quality of peace, the quality of happiness can expand or get better or healthier somehow. So this Venusian revolution, the, the gas pedal is being pressed on it and it goes back to April. All right, number four, disruptions, erratic, unstable moments of conflict. Let's be honest, Mars in Taurus is not so comfortable in Taurus because it is a Venus ruled sign. So this would not be the world's most comfortable place to experience a conflict. And yet this energy can be conflict oriented especially when things need to change and there are clashes of values or there are stubborn or recalcitrant energies or people or forces that are resistant to change and then you have to force it and it, 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 it results in some kind of conflict. So watch for that as well. This energy is disruptive. It is erratic. It is unpredictable. It is sort of wild. It has that kind of feeling of like, you know, in the movies, there's always like a wild horse and then there's like a horse whisperer, you know, 
this energy is the wild horse. And I think in order to have a horse whisperer relationship with it, we have to start by not trying to hem it in too quickly or tightly. Just like in the movies, the horse whisperer is like, I'm just going to stand here. <laughs> I'm going to stand here next to the horse. <laughs> if I just stand here for a while, I'll feel my presence. <laughs> and then after a while, he'll like, you know, he'll, he'll somehow approach the horse within like, 10 feet or whatever the horse whisperer in those movies never just goes in and just like grabs the horse and tries to you know wrestle it to the ground and 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 uh subdue it or break its spirit he's like i'm not gonna break your spirit i'm your friend <laughs> you <know? laughs> i feel like that's every one of those movies and anyway <laughs> so the point is be a horse whisperer don't break don't break the spirit at the same time, like protect yourself. This is a wild and erratic energy. So, okay. Number five is a so random. Sorry, guys. A difficult and unexpected emotional upheaval that disrupts the status quo. So, this is also the thing that Taurus hates, right? Is like uh, things are not predictable, easy, smooth. If it's difficult, if it's deep, if it's hectic, if it's chaotic, if it's intense, if it's cathartic, eh, Taurus will pass most of the time, you know? Uh, this moon in Scorpio is going to be lit and opposing the conjunction. So don't think that we're going to get away without at least some intense emotional dynamics and upheaval surrounding uh, the Mars-Uranus conjunction. It is there. It's baked into, the, into this moment. So that is it. That is it. A little briefer uh, this week with the recordings because I'm recording a bunch in advance before I leave for some family time for the 4th of July. Um, so uh, it's a big month. I will see you again on Monday and we will spend more time. Uh, we'll spend more time unpacking this on Monday and Tuesday of next week as well. May the force be with you.